welcome back to the Bible Study 3, I won't say what Ian used to call us, Alan, Tun, Ian Bell. Sometimes people say, Tim, you never say who you are, but yeah. I guess. Uh, and we're, we're in chapter 44 of Isaiah, and Alan, we're going to read from verse 6, because basically the, the six verses, the five verses we read last week, we've covered them. Yeah. Correct? Okay. So you're going to read, it's going to be a long read through to verse 17. <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 44, starting at verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. And who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Those who make an image, all of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who would, from, who would form a God or mold an image that profits him nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed, and the workmen, they are mere men. Let them be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, they shall be ashamed together. The blacksmith with the tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with hammers, and works it with the strength of his arms. Even so, he is hungry and his strength fails, he drinks no water and is faint. The craftsman stretches out his rule. He marks one out with chalk. He fashions it with a plane. He marks it out with a compass and makes it like the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man that it may remain in the house. He cuts down cedars for himself. He takes the cypress and the oak. He secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and the rain nourishes it then it shall be for a man to burn, for he will take some of it and warm himself. Yes, he kindles it and bakes bread. Indeed, he makes a god and worships it. He makes it a carved <clears throat> image and falls down to it. He burns half of it in the fire. With this half he eats meat. He ro roasts a roast and is satisfied. He even warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm, I have seen the fire. The rest of it he makes into a god, his carved image. He falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, help us, uh, help all the folks who are watching this program to see who you are and to uh, see clearly uh, the alternative uh, false gods and Lord we pray that this Bible study will not be a case of us uh, fashioning a God um, from our own of our own making or imagination but that you will reveal yourself to us as the one true God and Lord help us all to to hear from you and to Take seriously the, the message from your word today. Amen. Okay. Amen. May, may I just... Uh, you just always may. Ju just mm -hmm. just yeah. as it were, before we move on to verse 6, is yeah. just a couple of thoughts yeah. from uh, verses... Yeah, please do. I, uh, I, I was verse, saying, if you have said something. Verse uh, 5, it talks about, um, you know, the, uh, um, verse 3, I will pour my spirits on your descendants and my blessing on your mm -hmm. offspring. It's obviously a reference to the New Testament era uh, and, and mm. Pentecost. Mm. Um, but then it goes on in verse 4, like willows by the watercourses. And uh, willows have uh, 
quite a few mentions in scripture mm. and uh, you know the particular tree if you've ever seen a willow tree it's it, it, the leaves are so thick that you get a lot of shade and the second thing about a willow tree it, it, is that it flourishes beside the river and yeah. that's why you get a lot of willow trees uh, beside rivers they give a lot of shade and they flourish well, and this is talking, I think, something about, uh, it's a picture in, in scripture. Willow is the abundance, life in, in the leaves, and the tree is very thick. Mm. The tree trunk, sorry, is very yeah. thick. And therefore it talks about uh, sturdiness and stability yeah. and roots. Uh, and so the willow tree, you know, is talking about, it signifies spiritual fruitfulness, yeah. spiritual uh, strength. Mm. and because it's featured by the 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 river yeah then psalm 1 life and and yeah. yes psalm 1 yeah uh, also again revelation where it talks about yeah. the the, tree the river tree of life yes uh, there and 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 it's speaking uh, it's a spiritual as it were a lesson is if we're going to thrive spiritually then our location uh, to the Very tree, the river of life is important. Very you good know. point, where yeah. you're planted. Where you're planted. Yeah. And in a way, you know, this passage is a continuation of what we started uh, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, where God is inviting people to position themselves. Basically, he's saying, right, there is my sphere, my um, area. Okay, and then there's outside of that area. Yeah. And the question is, and that's relevant to all generations and all people groups and all societies, you know, as we said a couple of weeks back, you have not called upon me, O Jacob. The question is, God is God. Mm. I am that I am. Mm. We established that a few weeks mm. ago. And his message is, are you with me? Are you looking towards me? Are you turning your gaze upon me? That's one alternative. And then if so, then he talks about salvation, giving his spirit yeah. to those who would be righteous, forgiving their sins, remembering their transgressions no more. There's a whole package associated yeah. with those who would turn their gaze upon God. Yeah. And then outside of that, there are those who refuse to turn their gaze upon God. And that's what this passage and what we've been studying in the last yeah. few weeks is talking about. Yeah. There is the contrast. God's camp and outside God's camp. Yeah. And in a way, we and the Jews have always drawn the camp sort of like Jews and Gentiles. What we're learning, I think, over these passages is, the new thing that we mentioned, yeah. is God is going to look at, not which nation, your birth, where you were born, or whom you were born of. He's gonna be looking at who's looking at him and who's not looking at him. Mm. And in this passage, he's contrasting himself, all right, mm. because he says, is there a God besides me? So that's one, yeah. God. And the other is those who make images. But those who make images is a proxy for everything else. Yeah. It could be Buddhism. Yeah. It could be secularism. It could be atheism. It could be political correct. It could be anything. That it, so it's either mm. with God or not with God. Mm. And although he's talking about images and things, because that's, that's what was prevalent in those days, mm. there is a modern day equivalent of making those images. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's the lesson for us today. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, I, 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 oh, go on. I think what Alan says is vitally important. We need to come to it. But I've got another thought from... Yeah, no, go for it. We go didn't for it. cover, we thought, didn't, we didn't cover the first five verses. And I think it's, it's not unrelated to what you're actually actually mm. saying but this interesting thing it's if you remember it's talking about the spirit 
um, you know, that, that pouring spirit on my descendants. And then verse 5, there seems to be a mysterious verse there. It says, one says, I am the Lord's, another will call himself by the name of Jacob, and another will write with his hand, the Lord's, the name himself, by the name of Israel. And what we have here is a picture of different groups who are, have different names, Absolutely. and yet they've been drawn together. Yeah. Now, and again, I, I, I think we were discussing uh, before the Bible study, it's not a debate when we debate things. We're, we're putting things out there just to actually have a discussion round mm. the particular issue. And, and one of the things that occurred to me is it seems to be saying to me that there is going to be a drawing together. You know, all of us agree that, as it says in Romans, all Israel will be saved. There yeah. will be a, 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 a movement of God mm. among God's people. Mm a new thing, yeah. as Alan was saying there. Uh, something we say, is it happening? I know, yeah. no, we know it's happening. Mm. A movement of God's people, all Israel will be saved. Yeah. They will have the name, as it were, the name of Jacob. Mm. And the yes. other will bear the Lord's name. Those of us who go by the name Christian, yeah. and you know what Christian yeah. means? It was in Antioch, it means mm. those who are the little Christs, yeah. Who, yeah. who seek yeah. to walk as Christ walked. Um, and there seems mm. to be this drawing together mm. Mm. here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, had, had we gone on last week and covered these verses that we read, uh, um, we could have drawn out the, the fact that you've got that scripture in Romans 11 yeah. that says, I will turn godlessness away from Jacob, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Mm. Now, Jacob is the symbol of unredeemed Israel. Mm. Um, when I take away their sins, and so all Israel will be saved. Mm. It's the most amazing uh, picture. So I do think it is relevant, you know, when the, the name Jacob is used, when the name Israel is used. But as you say, we've been brought into the whole commonwealth yeah. um, of, yeah. of Israel. That, that's right. That, that, that's the, you know, taking down of the wall, the Ephesians yeah. Yeah. Uh, wall of separation yeah. uh, between Jew and Gentile. Yeah. I think we are living in those days when that wall is being dismantled yeah. and there's a coming right. together of Jew and Gentile yeah. believers, yeah. you see. And what's important is, do we call ourselves by Jehovah's name? Do they call themselves by Israel's name? Mm. It, yes, yes, but it doesn't matter because we're all believing in That's the right. same God, That's the right. same God of verse 8. Mm. Is there a God besides me? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. not more than one God where the Gentiles go to one God yeah. and the Jews go to a different God. It's the same God. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it interesting? This is the point. I, 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 I've, it sort of jumps out at me. It's a sort of visual thing more than anything. That the way this is what the Lord says punctuates the prophecy of Isaiah. Yeah. And, so, and there's sort of little variation on the theme. So, you know, in chapter 43, 16, this is... Way, what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the waters. Then we have um, here, you know, verse 6, this is what the Lord said, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and the last. It's like it's just different attributes and aspects of God. Um, Isaiah is just popping in there and, you know, just over the last couple of chapters it was said, you know, four or five times and just little extra details right, right at the beginning of chapter 43. And he a, who created you, O Jacob. And I'm a refrain, a repetition of the motif. Yes. There is no besides That's me. It. That's right. You know, it's almost like a, a chorus of a song. Each yeah. verse is different yeah. and a different message. That's but it. the chorus is a re yeah. repetition of the core truth. I'm mm. the first and the last. Yep. Classic. Mm. That's right. Classic. Besides um, me, there is no God. And yeah. who can proclaim as I do? Yeah. You see, and this, this picks Revelation, up... Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And yeah, it's all based on the will of God. It starts and ends there, not man's will. Mm. Who can proclaim like I do? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's through God's proclamation, because he's the same God that says, let there be light, and there was light. Yeah. There's no turning back. There's no shadow of turning back with him. That's it. And it's not, it's not just poetry. People say, oh, the prophecies of Isaiah, we can read no. them like poetry. You know, it's, it's 
bringing the folks back, as it were, justifying the whole thing and bringing it back to anchoring it in who is the prophecy from. It's the prophecy of Isaiah, but it's, it's the Lord speaking mm. through Isaiah. It's, it's, it's probably worth, a worthwhile study for someone that's got the time to, to look at all of these this, and, and how he just tweaks it and gives another aspect or another element. But you're right, it's establishing who, who the, the God is who's saying all of these prophecies of mm. what is to happen. And this understanding of God speaking is, is an important one. Mm. And um, I'm sure we've covered this before, but um, it's God speaking. There, you know, we speak, we sort of like, some of us speak and some of us do. And there's a dichotomy between doing and speaking. Mm. Uh, whereas in scripture, there is no dichotomy between God speaking and doing. Yeah. In other words, you know, for example, in the creative process, it says God spoke. That's right. And it happened. Let there be light. The, you know, we know where it says, you know, where God speaks, his word will not return to him mm. void. Mm. And the NIV translates that verse, it will not Empty. return to him without achieving its purpose. Yeah. In other words, God speaks and it will happen. Mm. Mm. And, and, and therefore, I mean, there's two things. One, it gives hope to us. You know, w when we read scripture, we know it will happen. It might not happen in the time scale that we would like, but it will happen. Mm. But secondly, in, in the church context, be very, very careful when we say, God speaks. Absolutely. It's I something know. very holy I know. and something very specific. Mm. Uh, and um, it's been cheapened in, in and we age. must be very careful yeah. not to cheapen it yeah that's right I know. yeah god yeah. said this god said that he said yeah. put the kettle on and yeah, yeah. all of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. there we are and, and this wonderful um verse eight you know there's no uh, other uh, rock verse seven verse seven oh yeah yeah that, well, this verse seven I, is good as well i appointed the ancient people i know and the things that are coming shall come in other words you know, I appointed, I called, I appointed. Yeah. You know, it's not about Israel saying, we are the people of God, mm -hmm. or as they said, you know, the temple, the temple. You know, we have the temple, therefore God will work for us. It's not about that inherent value in the, in the uh, Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. But what it's saying is God in his grace called a people for himself. Yeah, and, and and I think that's important for us to uh, appreciate that that um, those of us who have a tendency to, to dismiss uh, the nation of Israel mm. uh, better take account of what it says here, yeah. where it says, "God, I have called mm. an ancient people. Yeah. I have called the appointed um, is." Uh, part of a sequence. Yeah. The sequence goes back to uh, verse 2 of ch uh, chapter 44. For example, it starts with formed. I formed you from the womb. Yeah. That's yeah. the first one. And then the chosen. You, Jeshuran, whom I have chosen. So yeah. he's formed and he's chosen yeah. and he's appointed. Mm. Yeah. You see? Very good. The yeah. three-stranded cord, yes. that's what it is. Yes. He has formed Israel from the womb. He has chosen Israel and he has appointed Israel. Mm, yeah. You can't break that. No. You can't break it. Yeah. It's a sequence and it's all true, all three parts of it. Yeah. Very good. Not only that, he, he, the declaration is the things that are coming shall come. He, he's, saying, yeah. he's saying what I said will happen, will happen. Mm. I love, uh, while, while we're tracing back, I, I love that where, you know, one will say, I belong to the Lord, the other will say, the Lord's, you know, it's, it's a wonderful, you know, we've got it in Jeremiah as well. You know, no more will a man say, know the Lord, they will all know him, you know, yes. from the least to the greatest. Yeah, that's right. It's a, one, it's a wonderful picture of, of some future restoration. Yeah. You know, have I not told you, verse 8? Have oh, yes, I verse eight, yeah. not 
told you yeah. a, a very interesting yeah. f turn of phrase. Yes. You know, and he's saying it, doesn't he? I, I mean, that's yeah. what distinguishes God. He yeah. says it speaks. beforehand. God speaks. Yes. God speaks yeah. today. God yeah. speaks to us. Yeah. yeah. Have I not told you? Indeed, there is no other rock. Mm. And I, the thing is that um, we, we've lost this connection between what it means when it says that God is our rock. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the in the days pre cement days, before the pre Roman days, yeah. you know, they, they you know cement was invented by the Romans. Yeah, that's right. In those days before it, if you wanted to build something solid, built on the rock, you build or with it, rock. With, or you yeah. build it on the rock. Yeah, you with have to rock. carve the stone. You yeah. carve it into the right shape. Exactly, mm. uh, and and so this is significant. What it, what it is actually saying when it says God is our rock. We're not creating it, it's there. But if you want stability, build your life yeah. on the rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as Jesus said, the wise man built his house upon yeah. the Absolutely. rock. Yeah. And, and have they got a capital in your translation for rock? It has on, in my Yeah, so it must have it somewhere there. In, because, you know, others have other little pebbles and rocks yes. and materialist things yeah. that they build on. Yeah. But there's something about this rock which is spiritual mm. yeah and those of us who are believers in jesus okay the same three things that i've mentioned before about being formed from the womb being chosen and uh being uh, appointed. appointed apply to us yeah. you see mm. and then going on and saying you are my witnesses so that's what we're witnessing to we're witnessing to the fact that those who turn to god are in the same boat as those who are formed by God, chosen by God, and appointed by God. Mm. And then he repeats, you know, is there, is there a God besides me? Uh, this motif keeps coming up. Yeah. And there is no other rock, I know not one. And, th that, that, and uh, that, that's, the, that's the essence. Are you going to join yourself to this rock? Because if you do, then that rock, God, will do everything that's necessary mm. because he's the initiator and the finisher yeah. of salvation, yeah. no, not our effort. Yeah. He's the reference it's, all point. we have to do is turn ourselves towards him yeah. and seek to align mm. ourselves yeah. with him. Yeah. And the rest is taken care of. And without him, you know, we're completely... Well, that, that's verse 9 onwards. Yeah. Shot, that's right. Shot yeah. around by the Any waves. alternative to the rock yeah. uses the word useless. I mean, the Bible doesn't mince its words. Yeah. <laughs> you know, anything outside of this rock yeah. is useless. Yeah. And that's, that's part of being a witness. You've got to be honest. Yeah. You know, if you see the rock of God and his word and all that that um, entails, and you see the alternatives, you've got to say they are false. You know, mm. they are not the, the rock. They, they may have attributes and they may uh, sustain you for a while. You may feel satisfied from a meal or whatever. And, uh, but it's all, it's illusory compared to the rock. And that's what we're yeah. here as witnesses to testify I, to. I, as Alan was speaking there, I, I was thinking, what does it mean to be useless? It, it, it's useless. What does it yeah. mean? It, it, it is actually about a time perspective, isn't it? Mm. Uh, that it's not saying that everyone who is not a follower does everything they do is useless. It may be useful at a, to a short uh, phase of time, but in terms of eternity, in terms of God's time... Yeah. No effect. No effect. Mm. Useless. Mm. Uh, and um, I think that is very sobering when we think about how we're spending our time and what is important, and even the issues that so trouble us, you know, in terms of God's time, the, the, they're transitory. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And in terms of being useless, you know, I think Jeremiah unpacks it a little bit, so if I might just read a yeah. few verses yeah, from okay. Jeremiah good, 10. Good. <clears throat> it's, a, it's reflective of what Isaiah is saying, very similar. For the customs of the peoples are futile, 
For one cuts down a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. <coughs> they are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Mm. All right. So Jeremiah's describing the same situation where people are going out into the forest, cutting down a tree, making an image, bowing down, worshipping. Jeremiah uses the word futile, or the yeah. English translation of the word is futile. It's the same concept. Yeah. But he says, that do not be afraid of them. There's a sense in which we could live in fear of the alternatives, mm. whatever they are. Mm. But God is saying, you don't need to be afraid of them because they can't do any evil mm. and they can't do any good. Mm. You know, that's the message yes. of scripture. Yes. To, yes. I think it's so relevant to us now yeah. Yeah. because we're under constant attack. A few weeks ago, you were you know, mentioning um, various uh, groups that are trying to impose their views yeah. on Christians and we need to stand and proclaim biblical truth. Yeah. You mentioned marriage, various things mm. that we've talked about mm. uh, uh, on, on Revelation. And what it says is those who speak up for them are blind, they're ignorant to their own shame. Yes, mm. yes. That's, that's the tragedy. Yeah. You know, they're shaming themselves mm. by uh, and so that, again, is the flip side of, of us being witnesses to the truth. They're actually being witnesses, sticking up for, in their blindness, a uh, falsehood. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, um, That's right. Yeah. Because whatever it is that they bow down and worship, they've made with their own hands. That's the message. Mm. We're not talking about physical wood. I mean, yes, Isaiah's talking about physical wood. Mm. But the message to us, all right, is... Whatever it is that man's imagination has constructed, yeah. they then in turn worship the thing that they themselves have made. I know. It's absurd, isn't it? When you, if, it would be absurd if God came to earth and started bowing down to the mountains and bowing down to the forests mm -hmm. and the seas. It, that's the absurdity of it. And so that, it is some, um, you're really demeaning yourself Mm. to actually worship something mm. that you've put together mm. yourself. A and in my prayer, I said that, you know, may we not be fashioning God or, you know, something from our own imagination. Mm. That also would be shameful yes. and demeaning, yeah. you know, to human intelligence, let's yeah. say. Um, mm. You know, the, that's not what we're doing, although that's what we're accused of doing, you know, by the, you know, all these modern thinkers. So. Mm. Even uh, some of the poetic description here, verse 11, let them all be gathered together. That's reminiscent of, you know, these politically correct and people who would impose their views and that are totally intolerant. We hear of, you know, universities that won't allow research. certain freedom of debate, yeah. freedom of inquiry, research into certain areas. They're just denying mm. because they want to impose their own, <coughs> their own views, their own values, their own construction. Yeah. Their own okay. utopia. Their own utopia. But it talks about gathering together. That, that's what it is. Yeah. They find each other, they gather together, and then they speak out against the elect. Mm. Mm. You know? And there's we're a, told... There's probably a translation, conspire together conspire as well. Conspire together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And of course, the uh, things like Facebook and other things allow people to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so they never become open. I mean, they, they, they are the way that Facebook, for example, is designed, and Google is designed, is that if you inquire about a certain thing, for example, YouTube, if you, if you, if you look at certain videos, uh, you know, th then it says, ah, you're interested in those videos, I'll keep giving you them. Now, after a while, you tend to think, well, there are no, there's no other truth outside of what I'm seeing. <laughs> and so you don't understand because you're being fed yeah. the same, yeah. you know, as it were, prejudice all the yeah. time. And what we've actually, and, and I think this is what the picture of people who conspire together, the people who, who, some, who vehemently oppose Christians because 
quite frankly, they, they never have contact except people of the same views all the time, yeah. whether it's, whether it's um, on the social media or That's whether right. it's in life. That's They're right. just, as it were, meeting with people who believe the same. And, and, and it's a caricature they, often that they've created. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And they, not, they, they have no opens. I mean, one of the issues that we have as Christians is actually, you know, you know, I, I don't believe that people, if they actually looked at Christianity with an open mind, rather than their caricature of Christianity, then they would then they would see yeah. how reasonable and all the Christians more, are. All the more important is for us to engage yeah. with people right yeah. across the you know the yes. yeah. the, the whole spectrum. We should be engaging with people so they can. Yeah. For better or worse, they can see who we are. But, but again, I was reading my quiet time this morning from Second Timothy, where it was talking about, you know, in the latter times, mm. and it talks about, you know, all sorts of of, the, of of things which have happened, and it seems to be an acceleration of intolerance, mm. an acceleration of sinful behaviour. It's happening. Yeah. And so. and and. And what, what we're actually finding is, is because of, you know, social media and such like, mm. it, it is just, I know. It's, there's been a, a great acceleration yeah. of it and it will get worse, mm. it will get worse. Mm. Mm. And one of the tragedies is that, you know, they don't, I'm talking about modern day yeah. secularists, yeah. etc. They don't even realize, okay, that it's a religion that it is an unviable alternative to God. Yeah. 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 In their rejection of God, yeah. they don't realize they're finding a substitute yeah. because they think in their heads, I am dismissing the whole concept, of, but you can't do that. Yeah. Because if you dismiss God, yeah. it's replaced with something else. Yeah. And it says here, deliver me, Okay, so verse 17, I'm just going okay, right to good. the end. Yep, yep. Uh, because, you know, in the, it, we'll come back to the middle bit, but yep. it, it rounds off by saying, uh, verse 17, he falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, deliver me for you are my God. That's just one of the most unbelievable lines. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. And the thing is that secularists and people like that they don't even realize they're bowing down and proclaiming something that is not God is God because in their rejection of the concept of God, they think that they have rejected, mm. all right, God, mm. but it's not possible. It's not possible for human beings to, in one sense, I'm, I'm just saying in one sense of the word, yeah, not show allegiance to something, whether it's carved out of wood or whether it's a construct in your own head. You're always going to bow down to it mm. and worship it and try and seek salvation from it. Yeah. Because we inherently know the fallen nature, we talked about this, the fallen nature. And therefore, we're each of us trying to seek some mm. form of salvation. And if it's not coming from God, it's got to come from something else that yeah. takes the place of God, yeah. which is why it says, deliver me for you are my God. Deliver me in the wider sense of the word. Deliver me from the fallen state that I find myself in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what he's saying is, is very true. And, and we're actually living, but I would ask the question, what actually do they believe in? Well, I, they think they don't believe in I, anything. I mean, well, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure, I mean, for example, the old atheists used to, for example, communists, you know, we, we may not have agreed with communists, but at least they had a structure. They, they had a consistency. They had a morality. We may not have agreed with that morality, but they had a morality. Mm. Um, now, what we have here now is something quite different. We have, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what people believe anymore. You know, it seems to me they believe whatever they want to believe and what is convenient at the same time, and mm. it is so flexible. Mm. I mean, it's, 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 I suppose you could sum it up with individual rights. I mean, I, I suppose that is a foundational principle, yeah. that, that they believe the individual. But the problem is, is, is that they don't actually do the work, and they don't, under, they don't, 
they don't actually think well when do individual when what is true when individual rights come in conflict with the rights of a community but do they have a do they have an understanding of a <coughs> philosophy of community anymore I'm not but sure it is they a do. moving target you see I mean yeah. going back to the analogy the analogy is of one chopping down a piece of wood and carving it and then bowing down to it yeah. But there's always the scope, because it's made of wood and you've carved it, yeah. to chip a bit more off and change its shape. Yeah. So its shape can change with the seasons. Yeah. Now, God is eternal. Yeah. I am that I am. But I think actually we're on, on we're very uh, strong grounds philosophically when we challenge people these days and says, well, tell me, what is your philosophy of life? Do you, I mean, you know, what, what, what actually governs, you know, why you behave in the way that you behave? You know, why, why I mean, a simple, a simple illustration is, you know, people in Leviticus uh, take, uh, for example, homosexuality, and they, they take out homosexuality, and they, and they say, it, it, you know, it, it's not a sin anymore, right? Mm -hmm. However, uh, you know, what else is banned in, in those chapters is paedophilia. Uh, wow. You know, and all sorts of yeah. things like that. Why, why, why is... Uh, incest. Uh, you know, incest. Yeah. You yeah. know, why, why, why... So why, who, who's, who's the one who picks? Yeah, who, who... But what they, what, what they say is they pick the other one, which is the mixing of the different types of cloth, and absolute, they ridicule it. Absolutely. And so they say, why make such a law about this? But, uh, absolutely. But the essence of it is, that from our position, there's a right and wrong. From their position, there isn't. It's yeah. whatever we define no, no, but, but we have, as right we, and wrong I mean, in they, any generation. They may not agree with us, but, <coughs> you know, we could rationally say, you know, you know, why we uh, accept the Ten Commandments mm. uh, and others. And the, the basic position is if it's carried through into the New Testament mm. uh, by the teaching of Jesus or not mm. reformed by the teaching of Jesus, yeah. then it still applies. Yeah. But, uh, but think, I don't even do that. I, I anyway, think that, yeah. and the point is this. Yeah. We may have a disagreement. No, there no, is no. a rationale yes. behind it. Now, often there is no rationale be behind what they believe, uh, and 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 it's and I would say, look, I, I for example, I, as I said to you, they have no definition of community. Now, and I'm not talking here about. They would say they do. Yeah, they yeah but what is part. what well, was their definition? It is to preserve the species, so you don't okay. allow anything within the community that may. Yeah cause or lead to the, okay, okay. the harming so of it's the an extension of individuality it's not an yeah. it, it's yeah. not a philosophy of the communi no. a community no. the people of community i mean previous generations communism and uh, and even secularism uh, in the past had utilitarianism and all yeah. sorts of philosophies there yeah. which you didn't now now they seem to have been thrown out at all and they but don't no one has any time to go through it anymore yeah mm. <laughs> just but, yeah but it's important and that's fine if they want to believe what they want to believe but yeah. don't impose it upon everybody else that's and right. that's what they seem to be doing and it's leaving the chaos well it's amanda yeah. spielman said we need muscular muscular liberalism now well, it's exactly what you're saying yeah, impose yeah. it because yeah. she's misunderstood yeah. muscular if Christianity. Can, yeah. If I can read the next three verses, yes. I think this oh, kind yeah, of rounds it off and it, yes. it, 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 it sort of pull, uh, yeah. picks up on what Ian's just saying. It says, verse 18, They do not know nor understand, yeah. for he has shut their eyes so that they cannot see, mm. and their hearts so that they cannot understand. Mm. And no one considers in his heart nor is there knowledge, nor understanding, to say, I have burnt half of it in the fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. And shall I make the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? These people, like Ian, what Isaiah is saying is they're holding a lie in their right hand, but they are too blind to see mm. yeah. that they're holding mm. onto a lie. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That is the problem with current exactly, rationalism. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. I mean, let, let, me, let me read to you um, um, 
Second Timothy chapter uh, 3 yeah. and verses 1 through to 5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will become lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do yeah. with such people. It's most interesting, the form of godliness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they are the modern Pharisees. They've yeah. created rules and we are, you know, the the obstacles to progress. Yeah. Yeah. So we're the negative ones, yeah. uh, you know, they're not doing any good with child abusers because we teach yeah. creation and that sort of stuff. They've inverted the whole thing. Yeah, but it's very dangerous. I mean, I mean, if you look at government uh, today and the rationale behind government, it's who shouts loudest. I know. You know it, I mean, if for example, Unbelievable. you know, if, if for example, you know, the National Health Service wants more money, they go on television and they shout louder and they move the money across the National Health Service. If the Russians now are coming and saying, you know, we've got a problem with the Russians, now we move across yeah. to defence. We move across to social services. We move across, you know, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's just... just trying and to it, just win the argument for the day. And it, and it's just... Or neutralise the argument. Uh, nothing is long term. Because there's no s central basis. That's right. I, do, I don't think... I'm not... I mean, I may be wrong, and someone might correct me, yeah. and 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 there might be if some. If they dare, the, yeah. You know, yeah, well, if they dare. <laughs> someone, someone might help help me. I, yeah. I really do. Would love to know: Is there a philosophy that is grounded upon any consistent thought, which, which, as it were, dictates life today? Now, I think that they make a virtue out of not having that. They yeah. Somehow they're, you know, man in his, in his depraved mind yeah. and heart is ingenious, yeah. <laughs> you know, in trying to wiggle his way through, uh, you know, with, with a, a form of godliness. But is chaos a way of living your life? Is chaos leading to your family? I was, I was listening to the news today and, and uh, it, it, it was talking about, um, you know, that, that councils can no longer afford to um, pay for social care mm. and what I mean by that the care of el the elderly you know people you know children mm. and such like that and they have to use their reserves and they're saying within five years 10% of councils won't have any money left at all mm. and that will stop altogether and in 20% uh, and a little later on and, and I'm beginning to think you know look uh, what what is what is the philosophy behind? I tell you what it is. Okay, Go on, a few tell things me, in my mind. Me, okay, one is eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. Tomorrow we die. Just get on with it. The other is Jimmy Savile, which I think typifies our age since the permissive sixties, which he wanted on his epitaph before they removed it in disgrace. Was um, it was good while it lasted. Yeah. And the other one that comes to me is is we studied a few weeks ago at the end of chapter thirty nine where Hezekiah was told that basically it's all going to go to hell in a handcart. And he said, well, as long as there'll be peace and security in my lifetime. Yeah. And that, I'm afraid, is a bit of the philosophy of our age. Yeah. Now, of course, you've got the climate change brigade, so you've got all sorts of different complexities to it. But I do think that this modern indulgent society with its British values, which are basically all geared around indulgence um, is, is all about, you know, yeah. selfish Well, it is. Even, even, works for us. even things like climate change, which seems to be a, is, is based upon the individual, what's good for me mm. and my family, mm. and will, will my family survive, mm. or will my descendants survive? And it's all about me and my family. It's, it's all individualism, and it's... Yeah, you know, and the one one um, feature, just one, yeah. um, uh, of of this current thinking, is um, not believing in the future. Yeah, you see, because you know, in my day and in past generations, people used to save up. That's true. Yeah. You don't find this now. No, people don't save. Yeah. And also, we've got a whole generation of older people, more and more of them, 
are squandering their children's inheritance, going on you know cruises and holidays and things, mm. because they don't see the point of leaving this stuff so, behind because they don't trust the government, they don't yeah. trust the whatever it is. There's lack of trust in the future, yeah. so they'd rather live now, and it takes you back to Roman times. Right. Yeah, you know. Eat, drink, and be merry. And probably tomorrow, there's a there's a yes for, for tomorrow, tomorrow we, we die. die. So there is this sort of the debt analogy because that was also in the Roman times, and and the debt has reached such proportions. And with the internet, everyone knows it. You know the national and international debt has reached mm -hmm. such proportions. People, people probably think, what's the point? We may as well just make what we can out of it while yeah. there's still credit being issued. Okay. Buy a car. <laughs> so so so. The counter, as it were, the starting place is to say that, you know, we Christians have a consistent understanding, theology, philosophy, whatever. Accountability. And, it's, and, it, stounds, and it starts with God, mm. that we're created in the image of God. Yeah. Uh, and that we are, as it were, together are, as it were, form the family of God. In, in other words, when in the first chapters of Genesis, am I my brother's keeper? You know, the inference being that, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, we are related to each other. So, so there is this understanding of, of responsibility. There's this understanding of, for example, education came out of, um, you know, as it were, discovering God's world yes. and understanding mm. God and creation, mm. the creative processes. Mm. That that came out of uh, came out of that, you know, uh, medicine and all such. It wasn't for the sake of living longer, it, you know. It, it not only met, not only you sought to uh, seek to uh, to heal yourself, but also have things like the National Health Service because you have a responsibility mm. towards the community. Mm. It's not about you, individual, and Why your family. Why don't you found a new political party? What's that, the community? I'm no, I don't, I'm half joking because yeah. apparently there's never been more political parties being... Yeah. That probably illustrates your point yeah. as well. Yeah. That the, 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 you know, the stability of a three-party, mm. two-party system. Yeah. There's something like 50 have been registered in, in, since Brexit. It's like something ridiculous. Because people... Sorry, I, yeah, I, 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 I was just going to say, you know, and, and the final aspect of what you're saying in terms of believers and what we believe, mm. we believe that there is a future. Yes. Why do we believe there's a future? Because God said so. Absolutely. We've been reading about Absolutely. it. Yeah. God says, I have declared it. Yeah. I have proclaimed it. There is yep. a future. That's right. I've forgiven your sins. I've put my spirit on you. Yeah. There's going to be a second coming, yep. a restoration of the Jews. There's going to be yep. this. There's going to be that. Yeah. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be judgment. Yeah. There is a future. So in this age of chaos, we have a message. That's it. You know, we have and, and also we've got to drive people who are living in this philosophical fantasy land uh, of Solomon. You know, what they, the utopia they yeah. are aiming for, he had it. Yeah. And he said it's all completely without purpose yeah, and yeah. meaning and all is vanity. Vanity of vanities. And, and so, and then we've got to contrast it. And I think Isaiah's doing it all the way through, yeah. actually. It's contrasting the stupidity and folly and futility of man and yeah. man's efforts and claims yeah. to salvation with, with God. Um, but uh, Ecclesiastes is excellent. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because, uh, in my mind, it has chapter 3, verse 11, when he just gets to that conclusion, what is the point in all our labour? And then he says, God makes yeah. things beautiful in its time, in his time, and he set eternity into yeah. the heart of man. Do, do you know and that's the contrast between the, the, that we evolved from apes and that basically we're just all a uh, product of chance mutations, even though it's not explained how. Um, therefore, we come, came about by chance, our, our future is chance, that's contrasted with created yeah. in the image of God, with infinite potential and with his purpose yeah. in our hearts. Now, at university, I did philosophy, part of my uh, course. And now and we've... And now we, ended, we ended up <coughs> with the, the deconstructionist the, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, philosophers, you know, Jacques Derrida and, mm. and, and others. And, you know, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of a picture of where we are. It actually, the course ended with the deconstructionists. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, 
I'm not sure there's been a consistent theology or the yeah, philosophy. It all it's, yeah. all it's all about unraveling what we got and yeah. no That's actually right. clear idea of where we Well, going. actually, they say, you know, what the freedom that they're talking about today is not the freedom that we talk about in terms of the yeah. human heart and, you know, relationship with God. Yeah. It is freedom from the past. Yeah. But do you Let's know, just unshackle ourselves from the but past. But do, do you notice That's when a Christian a gets up and actually says something Christian, I believe this because, like maybe a politician, maybe yeah. like Theresa May yeah. says, I go to church and I believe yeah. this. Immediately, the people don't attack what she's saying so much as the person. Yeah. You know, and, mm. and, and I find that, That's you know, interesting. It, 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 it's, I yeah. find it challenging, really, yeah. because they have nothing to say. Yeah. Why, do we, why are we cowering at these people? You know, they're lost, sheep without a shepherd. Absolutely. We've got, we've got just three minutes or so, so we won't read any, any more. We pretty well, there's another package here, isn't there, Alan? I, for me, the package started a few weeks ago with at the beginning where we read from, I think, verse eight of, um, was it chapter 43? Mm. You know, and it was that contrast of, you know, gathering, you know, let's, the, let's, here's the human version, and then this is what the Lord says. Yes, I know, I mean, verse eight, as you mentioned, started with blind people who have eyes, deaf who have ears. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, 44, uh, 20, yeah. uh, ends with, you know, a deceived heart has turned him aside and he cannot deliver his soul. Yeah. So, so th I, I, I think that's the arc. Mm. Uh, the, the, the message is, mm. there's God and there's not God. Yeah. And which camp do you fall into? Yeah. And which camp you fall into isn't to do with effort, mm. how good we are. Mm. It's to do with where we direct mm. our attention, mm. Jew or Gentile. I think that you know the, the part of the message of this is, okay, you're coastlands, you're nations, mm. but you can say I belong to Jehovah, mm. you can say I belong to Jacob, mm. you can say I am Jehovah's, you can say I belong to Israel, whatever name you write, mm. it's fine. Mm. You're in this camp. Mm. The alternative is deceit, mm. lack yeah. of understanding, yeah. and bowing down to something you've made mm. with your own hands. Mm. Mm. The, I, I can't help think of, uh, but we won't read it, but I'll just recite a bit from it in, in Romans 1, where, where he says, they're gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They are senseless. They disobey their parents. Mm -hmm. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. I mean, Paul, it almost summarizes what um, here, and then a bit later in chapter three, he says, you know, their, their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit you know, mm. poison of vipers on their lips. Mm. This all comes out of, in my mind, a godless worldview. Mm. It will inevitably lead to savagery. And even though we live in a very sophisticated world, we're leading, lead, leading in the direction <coughs> of savagery. And then um, there's the other one in chapter two where it says that those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, there will be eternal life. Mm. But for those who are self-seeking seeking, and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be trouble and distress. Um, I'm reminded of that when you just said to Jew and Gentile, it's no difference. All, mm. all, as it says, yeah. every mouth will be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God, and I suppose that's what we seek to do in our Bible studies. And we do get to a point where our mouths are silenced and we <laughs> get to the end of our, our water. We're out of time, by the way. Um, <laughs> we get to the end of our water and then we take a break. And we, we can see you next week. Thanks for bearing with us. It's, you know, we're not Isaiah, by the way. We're just seeking humbly to open up these passages. And it's a great privilege. And we will see you again. Sweet, cheerio.